All right, these are the video instructions for the Kepler's first law of planetary motion activity. Uh, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be graphing the um, orbit of Venus. So this is the worksheet that you have received. So the first page is background information. Uh, you can read this if you're interested in doing that. Uh, it's basically the same information that you learned in the uh, initial Kepler activities that we did on the first day of our, our Kepler lessons. Um, you're going to go ahead and uh, turn to the second page of the activity. And this activity relates to Kepler's first law of planetary motion, which is the planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. We'll be doing other activities that focus on Kepler's second and third law, which are also listed on your paper. But as I said, this activity focuses on Kepler's first law of planetary motion. The planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one focus. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be graphing the orbit of Mercury. And before we do the graphing exercise, um, we're going to uh, complete the questions one, two, and three. And the information on those questions is going to help us with um, some final questions after we complete our graphing. So the first question is, how many days separate each observation? So what are the observations? Well, on the next page, you will see all the data. These are the observations. We've got uh, observation one through observation 18. So there's 18 observations. So how many days separate each observation? Um, the orbit of Mercury complete, uh, is one complete circle. And there are 360 degrees in a circle or an orbit. So we are going to uh, remember that when we do this. Uh, also, the question asks about days. And the days involved are 88, because that's how long it takes for Mercury to complete one orbit. So we have 88 days for one orbit of Mercury and 18 observations. So our first question is 88 days. divided by 18 observations. So it's 88 divided by 18. divided by 18 is 4.88888, we're just round up to 4.89 days. Days per observation. That's the answer to the first one. The second question is, is there any interval which is different from the rest? If so, which two observations are separated by a different time interval? So the time intervals, um, if we look at these, we have observations 1 through 18. Uh, if we look at the degrees, this is uh, the degree from the starting point. Uh, they go up. They go up. Uh, we could look at the difference between them. So we can see that uh, this is 30 degrees difference. This is 31. Um, this is 30. And if you follow it, this one's 20 right here. Uh, this one's 15. This one's 14. You can see that they're not uniform. So we could write down every single um, difference in degrees and look for a pattern. Um, we could do that. Um, but the answer is, so we have observation one. And the orbit of Mercury. And then observation 18. There is another separation 
I mean, we could look at the separations between one and two, two and three, three and four, et cetera. But there's a separation between 18 and one because Mercury has got to complete the orbit. So there's another separation that we should look at. So if we look at the differences here, this is 20 degrees between them. This one's 19 between them. We go up here, 31 minus four is 27. This one's 30. Okay, so there's they're going up 19, 20, 27, 30. What's the difference between here? So I'm gonna draw another little diagram here. This is zero degrees. Uh, one degree, or the first observation is at four degrees. And the 18th observation is at 350 degrees. So the observations, this is one, this is 18. So between here, which would be between 18 and one, we have 10 degrees here and four degrees here. So that's a total of 14 degrees. So 19, 20, 27, 30, we would expect this one to be bigger if it was the same time interval. It is not, it drops. So that's the different interval between 18 and one. 18 to one is the answer. That. And then uh, the next question is how many days separate those two observations? Show your work. Show your work. All right, so the way we should do that is we know that it's 14 degrees, and we know that the total distance of an orbit is 360 degrees, and we know that it takes Mercury 88 days to go 360 degrees. And we want to know how many days it takes Mercury to go 14 degrees. So that's our equation. So we're going to take 14 times 88 and then divide by 360. And x is 3.42 days. And that is the answer. How many days separate those two observations? All right, so that's the initial questions. That's how you do them. And now we're gonna go ahead and start the graphing. So it says uh, to get a piece of graph paper, but you don't need graph paper. So if you're at home, you can use any piece of paper. Um, but what you do need is one of these. So if you do not have one of those, uh, you could try and make one. Um, you can make one if you don't have one. Uh, it would be best if you had one. So the first instructions read, holding a piece of graph paper sideways, put a dot for the sun a distance of about five inches from the bottom. So it should also be in the center, five inches from the bottom. So my piece of paper is 11, 11 inches across. So uh, half of 11 is five and a half. Five and a half. So there's the five and a half mark. And we want it to be five inches from the bottom. That's where we're starting, right there. Okay. That's our starting point. And then the instructions say with a protractor, put dots at angular distances indicating 
indicated for each data point going counterclockwise with zero on the right. All right, so we're gonna put zero on the right. So if you were using graph paper, if you were using graph paper, this point would need to be on a, where two lines cross like that, okay? If you are using graph paper, if you're not, don't worry about it. Okay, so then you're gonna have a point for zero degrees that's off to the right. Right there, zero degrees off to the right. I need to sharpen my pencil. Hold on a second. Maybe I just have a mug of hair that's already sharper. Yes, I do. We'll just use one of the other ones. Right. So the data we're going to graph are these observations and these degrees. So at observation one, I'm going to go four degrees. Then I'm going to go to 31 degrees. And then 61 degrees. All right. So the first one is at four degrees. And then 31. Sixty-one. Ninety-two. If I don't get the points exactly where they need to be, it's because my setup for recording this, I'm at a weird angle doing this, 149. So it actually, I might be getting these off a little bit because I am like stretched out across the lab table. 172. One ninety-two, right? So this is 170, this is 180. So 192 is down here. So then I'm going to flip this, make sure my zero is lined up. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take the rest of the values and subtract 180. So 192 minus 180 is 12. So 10, 11, 12. Two oh nine, two twenty four, two thirty nine. Would be fifty nine two fifty two would be seventy two oh you guys can't see how many have I done like that way all right that wasn't good. There we go. All right. Two sixty six would be eighty six. Two eighty. Be a hundred. Two ninety five. Oops, wiggle. Two ninety five. Ninety five plus twenty is three fifteen. 
What did I just say? <laughs> 295 minus 180, 115. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Late in the day. 295. 311 minus 180, 131. But I'm going to write 311. All right, 330 minus 180 is 150, which is right there. But I'm going to write 330. And 350 minus 180 is 170. But I'm going to write 350. Okay, so there's all my angles. All right, so that creates a circle that represents the degree positions for Mercury for each of the observations. But that's not the orbit of Mercury because Mercury doesn't orbit in a perfect circle. Mercury orbits in an elliptical orbit according to Kepler's first law of motion. So now I have to do this step. Use the scale that one inch equals 0.1 astronomical unit. Measure the distance from the sun for each data point and put a dot at that distance. When you have plotted all 18 data points, connect the dots as smoothly as you can. And that will be the orbit of Mercury. So now we have to do the distance that the planet is from the sun. That's the sun. These are our distances. So we're going to use the scale. One inch is 0.1 astronomical units. So 0.35 astronomical units is three and a half inches. 0.32 is 3.2 inches. So if you're working with inches, you know that won't be too easy to use. You're gonna to have to do some estimation. So half an inch, so three and a half, I'm just gonna do this right here. Here's three inches, here's four inches. Half is easy, right there. Because it's halfway between three inches and four inches. But 3.2 inches, well, you're going to have to estimate. So this is 3.25 right here. So we just need to go a little bit to the left. So you're going to have to do some estimation for that. It's not going to be easy because inches is not divided evenly into 10 unless you have an engineer's ruler, which you probably don't. So you're just going to have to estimate. All right, so our first one is three and a half inches, and that was at four degrees. So I'm going to take my ruler, and I'm going to put this end where the sun is, and this along where my four degrees is, and I'm going to put a point at three and a half inches right there is my new point. The next one is 3.2 inches at 31 degrees. So I'm going to line them up. Right, this is three. This is three and a half. That's two five. So two is going to be right there. Right there. Did I do that right? Yep, that looks right. See, my first point was there. There's the one I need. So, so you don't get them mixed up. You might want to mark it somehow. Maybe put a little line through it. So you know that's the, that's the distance marker. All right, the next one at 61 is 0.3 or 3, 0.31, which is 3.1 inches. 
So here's three, here's four, 3.1 is gonna be about right here. I'm gonna put a dot and I'm gonna put a line there so I don't get it mixed up with other marks. All right, the next one at one, at uh, 91, it's the same, 0.31. Point three one. Put a line here so I know which one it is. All right, one twenty two says point three two, so that's um, three point two inches. Next one's 3.5 inches at 149. So the distances that Mercury is from the sun is not, they're, is, they're different, they change. So <clears throat> the orbit of Mercury around the sun is not a circle, it's an ellipse, which is what Kepler's first law states. All right, the next one is 3.8 inches. Five, eight over here. The next one is 4.1 inches. The next one is 4.3 inches. And you just keep going. 4.3. 4 4.5 for the next one. Four point six. Four point seven for the next two. Four point six. Four point four. Four point two. Four. And point three seven or three point seven. Okay. So all of the points. 
have been drawn, have been marked. So now you connect the dots identifying distance. Try and make it a little curve. Since this is an orbit. All right, there's your orbit of Mercury. Now we do have something weird going on here. So you could check it, 209, because if that shouldn't do that, so let's see, did I do one wrong? 209.43, so 4.3, 4.2, yeah, I did. So I'm gonna make an adjustment there. That should be more like that. Because it definitely didn't look right. That's better. And I'm going to erase that mistake. That was pretty bad. All right. OK, that looks better. All right, so there's our orbit of Mercury. If it was a circle, then we would have drawn our line here. Okay, but it's not. Notice that it is an ellipse. Here, Mercury is closer to the sun. And here, Mercury is further from the sun. It's an ellipse. The sun is at one focus. The other focus would be about right here. All right, so you have some thought questions to answer. Go ahead and answer those questions. And then you are done with this activity.